You have to take risks in order to live your dream life. Think about that for you. What risk do you need to take in your life in order to start living out your dreams? It could be investing in yourself, getting that mentor to help you go to that next level. Again, I've never regretted hiring a mentor. Never. Welcome to Crafted Entrepreneur. We are doing part three in our 36 lessons in 36 years. I'm going to start out on number 21. You can't outgive God. You will never regret being generous. Think about that. Anytime you've been generous, do you ever look back and say, oh, I wish I wouldn't have helped that person out. Oh, I wish I wouldn't have given to that charity. You know, we always feel good about it, but you don't want to just like throw money at charities that you don't care about. You should be mindful and prayerful about it and really just be obedient. Like if God tells you to give, give. And I know some people when they are driving down the street and they see a homeless person on the corner, some people are like, oh my gosh, I don't want to give money to him because he's just going to spend it on alcohol. Well, God gave me a heart like a long time ago. Like when I see homeless people, like I give them money. Like I give them food, whatever I have in my car, because I just, I cry. I I hate seeing people like that. God's given me a heart for the poor in that way. And I don't worry about what they're going to do with it. If God told me to give them money, I'm going to give them money, period. So it's not our job to like worry about what they're going to do with it afterwards. Like you need to be obedient to where God calls you and he will always restore what you give away. Number 22, maintain diligence in your investing strategy. And, you know, I like to look up the definitions of things and diligence stands for giving like careful effort. Okay. Basically. So think about that. Are you putting careful effort into your investing strategy? One thing that I do with Chase is we have like a quarterly meeting around our investment. Okay, this is really important to just like make sure that we're on track with hitting our goals. But we also talk about our investments because some of our assets cash flow daily for us. And so we talk about it every week. We're like, how are the returns going this week? And we see, do we need to pivot? Do we need to make adjustments? But we, I mean, it's a full time job for us, really, our investment strategy, our tax free wealth strategy now. And so we're constantly talking about it and assessing it and not making decisions based out of fear ever because we have a very tight handle on what's happening with our investments. And I really believe that the more you get educated, the more empowered you will be around your investing strategy. So invest in the masterminds, invest in the courses, invest in the mentors to learn what you don't know right now Don't just blindly trust financial advisors. Oh my goodness, I cannot stress that enough. Number 23, start an infinite banking account ASAP. What's an infinite banking account? Well, make sure to go back and listen to the episode I did with Jack Waldron. We'll link it up in the show notes for you. But infinite banking is a concept designed around a whole life insurance policy. And What this insurance policy does is it experiences a guaranteed rate of growth. Mine does 8 to 12%, okay? And so 8 is guaranteed. It's not going to go less than 8. And so 12 is like the, you know, potential to make more. And what happens is when you become a policyholder, you can borrow from your whole life insurance policy and enter into a private contract with that insurance company. Okay. That's going to allow you to take out a policy loan. And if you decide to pay back the loan, it's repaid back to the policy and you're avoiding any fees, credit checks, all that kind of stuff. So I know it's, it's mind blowing, but right now, like I just took out a hundred thousand dollars. I needed to put something into real estate And I just took that out of my infinite banking. Now that was money I had originally funded, right? But it's growing at that eight to 12% rate. 
even when I pull that money out. That's what's mind blowing. Okay. So it's a very useful financial strategy. A lot of wealthy people use it to build wealth and reduce the amount of money they spend with like third party fees and financial advisors and all that kind of stuff. So it's very easy to get a loan from my experience. There's tax advantages because you can only put money in your infinite banking after it has been taxed. So let's say you put $100,000 in there post taxes. Well, everything that you gain in that account, you don't have to pay taxes on it. From my understanding and what I've experienced, again, I'm not a CPA, so always do your own research, but you know, you'll see what I have seen. You can also protect your assets that way as well. The thing about it is this. If you don't have a lot of extra money and you can't fully fund your life insurance policy, you shouldn't do it. So if you can't completely max out your retirement accounts, don't move into the infinite banking world. You have to make sure you're already fully funding your retirement accounts every year for you and your children. Once you've graduated to that and you you have extra money left over after that, then you can move over to the infinite banking. And it takes a few years for this account to mature. So um, just also heads up on that. It also costs money to fund the policy. So you're going to pay a high fee in the beginning. There is a lot of misinformation around infinite banking out there. So I highly suggest working with someone you trust. Remember Jack Waldron. I don't get any money for recommending him. I just want to point that out. I just really believe in him. And I like the way that he takes the time to educate people. Even if he can't open up a whole life for you, he will educate you on the different products that could potentially help you financially. So just go check it out. I wish I would have done that in my early, early 20s, you know? Number 24, you have to take risks in order to live your dream life. Now, I want you to assess your risk tolerance. We've done an op- episode on this before. What is your risk tolerance? What type of risk do you feel comfortable making? What's going to stretch you and grow you into that person that really helps you live your dream life out. So for me, a risk is every time I invest in myself with a mastermind, with a coach, a course, I'm taking a risk because you never really know what you're going to get. Like there's really good marketers out there that, you know, have really great messaging and you think you're going to get one thing, you buy it and you may go, oh my gosh, this isn't what I wanted. But what I've learned is even when sometimes it's not what I necessarily wanted, I get something that I need out of it because I squeeze the freaking juice out of that lemon, right? So you always got to go into it with that mindset that it's really low risk because you're always going to learn something from somebody. And when it comes to investing, you want to assess your risk tolerance. You want to diversify the things that you're investing in. That's, That's personally what has worked for me when I went all in on extremely risky investments, I lost a lot of money because I didn't have things in alternative assets that I knew were going to make me money over time. I just went for the really sexy, cool stuff. And now I go for low risk. Okay. I like multifamily real estate storage. I'm looking into getting into medical offices, but Then, and then I have my cash advance syndication. Those are all low risk. Now I allow myself to do one high risk investment a year. Maybe as my wealth grows, I might change it to more than that, but one high risk investment a year. And that's usually in a startup. And I go into like, you know, a a VC role. And last year we did a fitness boutique. I don't know what it's going to be this year. Nothing's I'm not going to like make myself invest in it. It has to be something I believe in and I'm passionate about, but I allow that. I have a rule around the risk I'm willing to take. So think about that for you. What risk do you need to take in your life in order to start living out your dreams? It could be investing in yourself, getting that mentor to help you go to that next level. Again, I've never regretted hiring a mentor. Never. Because I've always learned something. It's stretched me. It's grown me. It's helped me changed my perspective, you know, and helped me grow to new heights, helped me meet the right people, you know? So really think about what that's going to be for you. Number 25, if someone gives you the heebie-jeebies run, I had an interesting opportunity come across 
my desk five years ago. And it was for an investment into an artificial intelligence company. And I'm going to change some of the things around so nobody can figure out what I'm talking about. But it was for grocery stores. Okay. It was a way to use artificial intelligence to get people to buy more inside of grocery stores. And the guy that was the CEO, I met with him at a specific grocery store here in Orange County. He was based out of Arizona. So we met up and I met with the grocery store owner that was already using this technology. He had nothing but good things to say, like was super happy, saw an increase in their profit. But there was just something about this CEO that I just, he said all the right things and he was a really great looking guy. You know, he checked the boxes in like what society would say he looks trustworthy. And I just, there was something in my spirit that I was just like, I just can't get on board. So I kind of dragged my feet. I didn't say yes and I didn't say no. And my friend who introduced me to this company, she was on the board of advisors. And she was like, oh, it's going to be a win. You're going to regret not investing in this. And da, da, da. like really like the peer pressure was hardcore. And at the end of the day, I just decided I couldn't do it because there was something about this guy. But I just, you know, like I couldn't point it out because again, in society, they would say he has it all. Well, it comes out that he's like, cheating on his wife and that he's embezzling money out of the company. And this is like, this just came out like about a year ago. And I didn't want to say like, I told you so to my friend, but it was like, I was just proud of myself for saying yes to passing on that deal. Right. And trusting my gut and trusting my intuition because yay, you know, saved me from the bad business that was going down, even though that company still lives on and I'm sure they're going to you know, do something, but that guy's not CEO anymore. (laughs) He's far from it. So always go with your gut. Number 26, parent your kids to make them independent of you. Teach them how to think and not what to think. We all know those people who they just don't know how to critically think. You're like, what? Like, why are you asking me that question? Like, really? And those types of people, they're just like, they're really, they're energy drainers. They're energy suckers. And you, you just, you know, like you don't really like those people. Nobody likes people who are really needy. So let's make sure to not raise needy children. But what I see so many parents doing is raising needy children. Okay. And I knew from a very young age that I wanted to give my kids the world, right? I wanted to give them the experiences and let them have a lot of fun. And I wanted to give them a leg up right? So I definitely invest in my children a lot with their private schooling, with all of their sports and getting the extra tutoring and the extra ice time and the extra private lessons. Like they are really invested in, in that way. But when it comes to taking care of yourself and the survival needs and thinking about things with friends, I really try to teach them how to think about things. You know, it's like, okay, how do you pack a good lunch? Mommy's not going to make you a lunch. You've got to decide here are all of your options. I don't buy anything that's unhealthy. And you've got to decide what's a balanced lunch you're going to take to school. And they do that. And, And my friends are always like, how do your kids make their own lunch? I'm like, because I taught them how to think about packing a lunch. And they know that's just what you got to do in the morning when you go to school. Right. And if they forget their lunch, that's on them. They messed up. And I always usually come through and come and bring them food, but it's teaching them that responsibility at a young age. Like, Hey, you've got to, you've got to learn these things. Like my 13 year old, he's going to be an adult in five years. That's not a lot of time that I feel like he could really probably handle a lot of life right now because we've taught him how to be a critical thinker. So thinking about things the other day, my daughter called me, she was at Nordstrom's with my mom. And she has a green light card, which I'm going to put the affiliate link in the show notes because it's the best credit card for kids because they can invest plus spend money. And anyway, she calls me, goes, mom, will you load my green light card? I want to get some aviator nation sweats. And I'm like, how much are they? And she goes, well, the top's 189 and the bottoms are 159. I go, wow. Did you do the math on that? How much is that total? And she goes, well, you know, it was like over $300. Well, I go, that's a lot, Charlie. 
don't you think? She goes, but yeah. She goes, well, what if I just get the pants? Me and you are the same size so we can wear it. And I'm like, gosh, she's a good little negotiator. And I said, okay, let me look on Amazon right now if there are any like things that look like Aviator Nation. And I told her, oh, I found some dupes on Amazon. They're only $50. Why don't we just get that? And you'll have, you know, extra money to buy more clothes or to invest. I always like to put that in there. And I said, what do you think about that? Would you, do you want to pay over $300 for this sweat set or just so you have the logo or would you rather save some of that money so you could do more with it and get the dupe? And she's like, oh, like it was a hard decision for her, but she's thinking and mulling it over. I'm thinking, hmm, that's going to be like 260 extra dollars. I had her do the math. And end of the day, she chose to go with an Amazon purchase and have extra money so she could have more stuff. And you guys, it's like, I was never, by the way, never going to spend $300 on a pair of sweats for my 11 year old daughter. Right. But most parents, what they do, because we get lazy and we're, we just get sick of all the ask is we go, no, that's too expensive. But instead I helped her think about things. So that way, when she's an adult and she has $300 in her bank account, she decides to go, you know what? No, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to find something that's more cost effective for my budget. And I'm going to have more. I'm going to have a plethora. That's remember that's teaching her how to think about things. So you guys, I have so many stories like that. And I probably should do a whole different podcast channel on parenting because I can, I get super obsessed with it, but I want you to start thinking about that with your children. Number 27, holiness is protection. Holiness is protection. Write that down. So good. Holiness. What is that? What does holiness mean? It's doing what God wants you to do. Think about when you were a kid, maybe you were like me. I wore that bracelet, WWJD. What would Jesus do? And when you're living in God's will for your life, you're living a holy life. And you have protection around you because you have closed yourself off to evil spirits. I really believe this. I've seen it in my own life. And so if you're struggling thinking, gosh, there's a lot of rules with like being a Christian or being a Christ follower, you're living life out of fear. And I did that for most of my life until recently. And I really realized that, no, actually there's a lot of stories in the Bible that teach you how to live because this is where you're going to be the happiest is if you live inside of the protection of the Lord instead of going, oh, I want to eat from the, the tree of the forbidden fruit and access a spiritual realm that I'm not going to be able to understand and open myself up to lots of dark spirits. It's very dangerous. And I wish I would have understood all of this and really how the Bible comes together to tell you a, a really beautiful story to help you live your best life. I wish I would have understood that in my early, early years, instead of just looking at it like, gosh, a rule book. Number 28, there's a reason the car windshield is larger than the rear view mirror. You got to see your future clearly. And on the topic of holiness, this is what happens is if you are reminded by your past triggered by your past and you get stuck with some shame of maybe past mistakes you've made in your business, that's exactly what the enemy wants to do is he's coming to steal, kill, and destroy. He wants to remind you of all the things that you've done wrong so you can't move forward. And this is what happens. There's so many amazing, amazing, amazing people that are listening to this podcast right now that you are paralyzed by perfection. And I want you to understand that perfection is not from the Lord. Perfection is actually a scheme of the devil because you've bought into this lie that you're not good enough, that it's not perfect enough yet. And so you are waiting until you become perfect. And we all know you're never going to be perfect. You're going to be waiting for the rest of your life. And so it's time to like stop looking in the rear view mirror at what didn't go right and start creating your vision with God. Start declaring the truth, Philippians 4, 8 through 9 you know, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is lovely, think on these things. And that's what you want to think of when you're looking at your future. What does God say is true? Well, that I'm going to live a blessed and prosperous life, that whatever I ask for and do not doubt, I will receive. 
So what am I truly asking for? If he cares about the birds of the air, how much more does he care about me? He cares about you so much. Better walk around like you're God's favorite. Look at the car windshield like you're God's favorite. Where are you going? Where are you headed? Because you were divinely guided and blessed. Number 29, building a network is the top priority. Cannot stress this enough. I've been building a network since I realized it was important to do at 23 years old. I've been building my network. And how I've built a network is always just to speak life and pour ideas and infuse encouragement into people I come into contact with. Back in my nursing days, it was just speaking life over other nurses. When I was an instructor at the nursing school, I spoke life over future nurses and all those people wanted to be my friends on on Facebook. And then they ended up buying from me and my network marketing company. And, and it just started to spread like wildfire. That's how I eventually ended up with 90,000 people on a team is because I, you know, you help a few people deeply and then they tell their friends and their friends tell their friends. It's gross. It's amazing. Right. But then I did that as a nurse. And then I did that when I got into my network marketing company, the friends I started making cross lines, sidelines in other companies that I was meeting on social media, finding out how can I help you achieve your goals? Even though you're not like in my company, how can I help you? And that was always my mindset. When you have that mindset, you're always going to be able to achieve your goals because the law of reciprocity is at play. You're, when you give, 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 people want to help you. Even if they can't help you directly, they're going to find somebody. Today, I had an investor call and it wasn't the right fit for him because he's really going a different way in real estate. So my fund wasn't like great for him. And I kind of shared, well, like this is who it's great for. It's great for somebody who wants that mailbox money, doesn't want to be an active investor whatsoever, you know, and they just want to receive a check and have their money multiply. And this is somebody I've helped a ton when it comes to business strategy. They're a neighbor in my neighborhood, right? So we see each other on walks. I'm giving them ideas, building life into them, sharing their stuff on social media. And he goes, okay, Kayla, you know what? I think I know a few people that would be interested in this. How do I share it? Because I want to make sure to help you achieve your goals, even though it's not something that I can do today. And that's, that's really the beauty of a network is when you have people like that, they're like, I want to help you achieve your goals, even though I can't physically do it with you. Guess what? Then he's starting to make those texts. He's starting to make those three-way chats. Hey, <laughs> Kayla can help you get into real estate. And I'm like, wow, God, you are so good that you always just bring the right people in that can help me in some way. And, you know, think about it like this in your life. If you go out today and you think, who is somebody I can speak life into? Be a person at the coffee shop. Okay. Done. Check the box. Just do it. Who is somebody I can help get closer to their dream life today? Okay. God will give you, when you start asking God these questions, you get these downloads of people. Who can I pray for today? You're going to get a download. Okay. Who can I be of service today to? Who in my network needs to know somebody else in my network and start making connections? I live by this and I swear it could be like a full-time job. Like, you know, and I don't like get paid per transaction for investing into my network, but it shows in my life and all the businesses that have flourished that because of my network. So something to think about answering those questions. That's your challenge for this podcast. Hope you enjoyed part three of the 36 reflections in 36 years. 